Right, we are recording. Uh, joining me today, Foy Vance. Hello. How you doing? I'm good, mate. I'm good. We've just had a nice little chat. You're uh, you, you you're kind of doing bank holiday stuff pre bank holiday. Yeah, I am. I am because it's a Thursday's my Thursday's my dump day. Right. I do my dump runs on Thursday. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I see. I always see them. Uh, for I don't know why it is. It's just like a good day. Thursday always feels like sort of a semi weekend to me. Yeah, absolutely. You know absolutely. What I mean? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. So, like I go and do dump runs in the morning. Get up early. Go and clear all the carpets out this morning. And then now it's two o'clock, so it's it's which means ten o'clock. Oh, lovely, lovely. Where are you today, Fro? Where 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 where's where's home at the moment? I'm up at a place called Aberfeldy in Scotland, uh, just right at the foot of the Highlands. It's 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 a killer spot. It's like being in Colorado sixty years ago. Uh, oh, lovely. Re- yeah, it's really it's really beautiful. Just beautiful valley. Um, and like I say, right at the foot of the Highlands. So you stand out the street there and look out and you see this mountain range. And it's, there's something very comforting about the fact that for 138 mile after the, after that, it's, there's nothing but mountains and just a handful of people on them. Oh, you know, lovely. With, uh, feeling the wind come off that, it's, it makes you feel blissfully insignificant. Wonderful. Wonderful. Right, Fred, I'm going to start your playlist. Right. And uh, and I'm going to ask you, please, for your first track to tell me the song that you think has the greatest ever intro, please. See, this is a this is a tricky one, isn't it? My guess is you usually get Bohemian Rhapsody. I've done four hundred of these now, and I reckon I've had Bohemian Rhapsody or maybe I think it's the second most chosen. I think it's about four or five have gone for that. But uh, it's normally that Teen Spirit's quite common, um, but Help by the Beatles is the most chosen. Oh, yeah, that's another good one. Well, do you know what? The one I went for is probably a, a lesser-known song by uh, an artist called Lewis Taylor. He's sort of, he, he popped up a bit in the 90s, sort of soul, mm-hmm. like, uh, soul music type thing. And he's got a song called Bittersweet. And it's just, uh, I just takes so long to set the song up. I, you know, it's almost like the intro goes right through verse, chorus, second verse, second chorus. And then when it gets into this uh, middle eight section at the end of that, the live drums kick in and the song, it's like, so to me, it's like he's made the whole song, this glorious, um, alluring intro, just this Lovely. repetitive mantra. It's it's an incredible piece of music. So I'm going to ask you uh, as, as a songwriter to sort of talk me through your approach to to songwriting, but essentially the intro. And if you can tell me if that's if that's in any way changed in, in regards to the way that we're seeing people consuming their music now, and these attention spans getting shorter, and and people getting their music from probably different places to where I, I believe me and you are around about the same age, probably getting their music in a very different place as to where we got as. Uh, when we were growing up and we, we, we'll get to that later in the podcast but I just want to know with some of these trends in you know and what we're seeing in, in 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 lots of music now where it's like right start with a chorus you know just hook them straight away and and I just wonder if any of that kind of I won't use the word science but that kind of trend ever filters its way down and and influences your your songwriting and essentially that intro do you get where i'm going with the question because I've, I've asked it 400 times for and i've never got it right no that made that made a lot of sense to me and in a word no no none okay. of what's going on none of what's going on in modern songwriting is influencing my songwriting at all none of it so um, purely traditional sit down well right. it's, just, it's not even about it's about um there's a great poem by uh Charles Bukowski called Art and he says as the form appears the spirit wanes and pop music is formulaic and rightfully so I've got a I've got a I've got a deep appreciation for what the writing that's going on of you know some writers at the minute Mm. some of what what's going on at the minute um but it's not it's not what it's not where I want to write from because Pop music is kind of, you know, you're you're trying to hit the targets, like you say, little snippets. The songs of the chorus comes within a minute now. It's like, don't bore us, get to the chorus. Mm. You know, and everyone talks like this: write a chorus, make it a verse, and write a better chorus. All this kind of stuff, um, and it's all all that is. It, it's all to do with 
selling the song. You know what I mean? Make yeah. the song sellable. And I'm not interested in making my music sellable. Uh, I mean, I'm after it's made, I, I, I'm very happy that I've got, you know, people in the industry around me to help me make money and make sense of this. But yeah. to, write, to write with that in mind, to write with that intention, to write solely to get on radio or solely to get on, you know, to me, like for me personally, that would defeat the purpose. Yeah. I can, I can appreciate it's a genuine art form. I'm not being snobby here. No, yeah, no, no. Form, okay. People want to do that. that. That's okay, but just not for me. Yeah, like that. That's that. You know, that that's the reason I ask that question. So I'm always fascinated by what people's takes are on it because you know you, you mentioned straight away Bohemian Rhapsody, and that's that's the song now. If you took that into a, a record company, people would be like, "Oh, what the fuck's this?" Like, yeah. you know, we're, we're, we're like two minutes in and nothing's happened. Yeah. It's like, and and it you know it wouldn't get signed, which is you know insane. Um, but then I also do think that there's there is a, a an, an incredible skill in being able to craft a you know a, a, a two and a half minute pop song. That's that's not easy to do. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. that, that you know they, they, they're they're all very interesting and and difficult and in, in their own right. So I'm always sort of interested as to as somebody that is a songwriter what their take is on it. So uh, it's just okay. less about music now, Stu. Um, it's less about music. It's, it's not really, music's the last bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and I say this with no, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to, you know, current UK artists. Uh, but it's just style over content for me. It's, you know what I mean? I think you stand a better chance in the music industry if you're a young, white, blue-eyed, malleable male. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't think that's 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 something that, you know, a lot of people haven't picked up on. Do you know what I mean? It is just that's that's a big part of the, I guess the the formula that these that these big labels, you know, look for. They want to try and find something that's going to have as much reach and as sellability and all of the things that I guess is the the grotty side of of that industry that is a million miles away from a word you touched on earlier, which was art and like. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it moves so far away from that, and it almost focuses on everything else but that. And and I think it's a slippery slope when, yeah, when when the powers that be that, you know, are influencing next generations and and soundtracking, you know, younger ears. If it is all purely financial and and yeah, and about that sellability, but it's always been there, I guess. Like, but it it, it definitely feels now just looking at. Looking at the, the, the I, I, I had a, a, a record deal in the in the nineties, and and I remember thinking then how difficult it was to try and get signed. You know, just literally a bag of demos going around Camden pubs, trying to give it to anybody that was even moderately related to any kind of record label. Just go, oh, yeah, pass that to blah blah blah, and uh, and 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 you know, secured a tiny little deal that you know and. And that was then. I just think now, nah. like you, you look at it in these major labels, and you don't knock that out of the park with your first album. See ya. And like, and then you look at and let's use Queen as an example. You know, these bands like they they find their feet. You know, they're not these bands aren't nurtured anymore. You know, there's there's only you know probably a handful of acts that you could probably look at that are a big selling acts now. Uh, that have come out in the last 10 years that have had that opportunity to to grow and I don't think there's many and and I, I looked at it and I, I, the, the Maccabees was a band that for me I used to look at the Maccabees and I used to think do you know what? They, they, they had moderate success with that first record and and they were like I think they were something of fiction and and that label just nurtured them and and worked with them and it was like I just hope that that isn't a lost thing there. And I hope that, you know, some major labels still see, you know, that rough diamond and just think, do you know what? There's, there's some real good to be had here. You know, the, the, these people are very clever and they're going to mature and they're going to, and with that will come, you know, incredible art. But I don't know. I don't see that happening very often. Uh, well, I, I think it probably still happens, but just not necessarily with the artists that, you know what I mean? Yeah. You just write one good song, but look really good. Yeah. And talk really good and be really cool. And like I say, mal malleability is a big one because, listen, let me balance it out a bit though, because I'm on a major. 
you know, thanks to signing with Edge label. Mm. That's 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 through Atlantic in the UK and Electra in the States. You know, it's a major label. And they're very gracious with me. I mean, that's largely to do with Ed, I imagine. But but still, it's worth saying. They're very gracious with me. I do projects, like we side projects that aren't going to make a load of money back. Sometimes they don't even make money back. They just cover themselves or whatever. Um, and they, they're, they're all about it. They're like, go ahead and do that. But the flip side of that is, like, outside of lucky bastards like me that fall into deals like that, <laughs> um, you know, it's a it's a corporation. I mean, it's it's they're there to make money. Yeah. They're they're bought. Their meetings are largely about money. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and numbers in general, um, and that's what they are. So, and that's not what art is. Yeah. You know, it's like it's trying to. I found that tricky over the years trying to marry the two. Going, okay, how much do I involve myself in industry here? Because. You know, it's in, it's important. There's no point sitting at home. There's no point me writing all the songs I've written if I never put them on a record and never got them out and never played live. And, and to do any of that, you need people. You know what I mean? And it's that fine line, though, isn't it? Of like, you know, dancing with the devil for want of a, a, a crass description, dancing with the devil a little bit and, and trying to retain your integrity and just try and get every little bit like balanced, isn't it? Because, you you know, like you say, as, as, as an artist, you want as many people to hear your your music and and it's yeah it's uh it's a tricky one man it it, it it really is and it's always a an interesting question that because it does throw so many kind of pros and cons and and and, and how the industry changes and and and, and trends and that the people get their music but i'm going to take you back now and for track two uh I, i'm going to ask you please to tell me the first song that you remember hearing that had an emotional impact on you please i remember this vividly uh it was You Light Up My Life by Debbie Boone. Um, in fact, when I, when I was uh, eight months old, what's that, 1975, my dad got a job in Canton, Oklahoma uh, as a preacher and also sort of build this church in, in this tiny little town. Um, and so when we, we were that far away from home, we, the way we'd contact with the family, the grannies and grandas and uncles and cousins and all that crack would be we would make audio tapes for each other and send them back and forth so my granny would she'd be singing a load of hymns and my granda would be talking about rapping this and rapping that and how everything's wrong with the world you know and you know uh, cousins would play their instruments or whatever but when we sent tapes back uh, I, I was three years old and sang that song start to finish it had a huge Im- it had a huge impact on me I knew every word yeah and, and home was where at that point in time, was Canton, Oklahoma. Yeah, and for you as well. Yeah, yeah, no, the whole family moved out. Yeah. Right, right. My dad, my mum, my dad, my, uh, me, and my three older brothers. Wow. And how long was you out there for? Five years, something like that. Four or five years. Can you can you remember it? You know what? I do remember. It's more sort of like sense sensory memories because I was five. Yeah. Let's say five when we come back. Five, six, five. Um. I think because we spoke of it so much, you know, having lived in, in Canton, Oklahoma, when we went back to Bangor County down, you know, there wasn't that, there wasn't that many people that had, uh, and you're all right, mate. <laughs> um, there weren't that many people that had, that we knew that lived in Canton, Oklahoma, you know, yeah. the Dust Bowl. And yeah. It was, it was quite a, it was quite a, a weird thing. It was polarized when we went home. It was really polarized. So there was always chat about it. There was, always stories there was always getting pictures out um listening to the tapes listening to the tapes back so i think i've probably stockpiled a, me- a memory from all that stuff more than yeah. actually being there i would have thought and if you had to pinpoint that emotion for what would it have been i guess love but you know you light up my life you give me hope to carry on yeah um, and it'd be the same if you heard it now it still is. I listened to it. Uh, I listened to it the other day. I can't remember why or how, but it came up and I, I, uh, I stuck it on. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Yeah. But let's stay in those early years. And, and for track three, I'm going to ask you to tell me the song that reminds you of your time at school, please. Time at school. Now, this is a, this is a tricky one because I, uh, I mean, there's so, the first thing that comes to mind is like, uh, it must be loved by madness. 
when yeah. you say school, when you say school, I go straight back to primary school. Somehow. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why, but uh, and yeah. I, I love this because so many people of our generation, the minute you say infant school, bang, madness straight away. Well, do you know the the other song, the more obvious one would be that you know uh, what was that? Uh, by madness. Pony shirts, banging it in baggy trousers. He should come to the braggy. Oh, yeah. Bag him on the with a plastic cup. Oh, what fun we had. <laughs> <laughs> that. In different ways. Like the school days. That was cool. That was all about school. And I remember yeah. listening to that. Baggy trousers, dirty shirts, pulling her and eating dirt. <laughs> I mean, that, right? I know people like, you know, like, like, people often, you know, credit bands like the, the, the Kinks and things like that for, for, for really incredible sort of London, you know, observational songwriting. That. He's genius, you know. Yeah. It, 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 it really is, yeah. and and Baggy Trousers is the most chosen record on that question. Like is the it? amount of people that just go <laughs> Baggy Trousers, like man, it's cool. It's a little, uh, but um, but I, I think you speak to a lot of men in their forties. <laughs> I do, mate. But um, it's uh, it, it's quite weird, isn't it? Because I think there were so many things about Madness that were just as a young lad, they were just. They were likely lads, weren't they? And they made funny videos. And he's like, what, as a young boy, like, what, what, what do you want when you're on top of the pops? Like, you want to see that, right? Or Adamant. Adamant obviously looked ridiculously cool as well. I was like, there's a guy that looks like a pirate singing songs. This is great. Like, Nah, but the rude boys, the rude boys with the crombie jackets and Oxford shoes and the wee caps. and you know Yeah, I mean? mate. <laughs> I, still, I still love that kind of... Uh, and they always used to wear... Remember those kind of wild glasses, real uh, square-edged glasses? Yeah. They always looked uh either they they're a very striking band as as a kid. Yeah. It was like you know, I remember when I was listening to bands like that, like when at primary school, I just assumed these people were sort of fucking born like that. You know, like yeah. stars are born. They, they don't, you know, you, you can't be born yeah. in Bangor and then go and become a musician and yeah. be an artist yourself. It never occurred to me as much as I sang pretty much all day, every day, and played as much as I could any instrument that I could get in front of. I was consumed by music, but never once until it was about 22 that it occurred to me yeah. that I could probably just do this and not much else. One of the things when you look at them bands and, you know, other bands that had that look, whether that be, you know, early Dexies or that be, you know, Specials or, or, or Madness, the thing that always strikes me, they look like they were a fucking gang. Like... And like when you're young and you they see a like, blind, and it's true though, isn't it? They look like a gang, and it's like, oh, that's exciting. I want to be in that gang, you know. Yeah. That they're having way more, way more fun than like I don't know, like whatever pop band was on. You know, I definitely wanted to be in Madness. It was like they just looked like they'd be fun. They looked like you know right. they were lads, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> geezers, mate. <laughs> yeah. So, how, how was school for you? Did you enjoy it? Yeah. It was a bit of a blur. I mean, every single, and I mean this literally, from P1 through to leaving school in fifth form, every single report I have at some point in there says, boy doesn't lack intelligence. He just lacks concentration. He daydreams too much. He's, he's you know what I mean? He's a smart enough kid, but if he worked, if he applied himself, he'd do better. Yeah. But I just so I just sort of meandered through school like a wee moth, you know, just bumping into lights here and there. It's a shame that teachers don't ever drill down into what you're daydreaming about. Mm. But you know what? It was uh, it was at that time where shit had just changed. Now I'm in high school now for some mm. reason. Uh, shit had just changed. Teachers could no longer punch you. Yeah when I got into second form, I think it was, and they could no longer cane you. And that put a lot of, you know what I mean? I don't know. I guess what I'm saying is teachers, I don't envy any teaching job. It must be the most difficult thing. And they must, there must be so many teachers that are desperate to give a few kids in the class that special bit of attention, but just don't have the time yeah. or don't have the, you know what I mean? Cause they're dealing with other shit that they, and they can't even slap the kids anymore. I don't know why I brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'd be able to slap kids. You having trouble with some of the kids in the uh, in the neighbourhood? <laughs> yeah. But that was that was weird, wasn't it? Did you ever get clipped at school? I yeah. Got clipped by a teacher. Yeah. Oh, like, literally, like blackboard rubber thrown at me. 
Like, yeah. you know, I, I had a teacher that used to get the hair right on your hairline at the back of your head and pull it up. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell, brutal. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it is weird now because, you know, I've, I've, I've got daughters that have just left school now. And, like, you know, the thought that that would be happening, like, through their school years. And, mm. and, I, and I always just find it weird that, like, my parents... I guess because they would have probably had it worse. Like my parents never just went, oh, someone does that. Tell them to fuck off. And it's like, but you, you don't, do you? Because it's school and it's what you know and you're terrified. And But on, on, on school, did uh, did you know what you wanted to be when you was at school? No. No, I told you, I'm off a daydreamer. Uh, a was you playing though? I was just... I was just chasing girls and trying to sing to anyone I could. <laughs> I realized singing was good. Yeah. Was that encouraged at school? Uh, the singing, not I the chasing of girls. I was pretty proud. Like I say, it was mostly girls that I would reveal that to. I never <laughs> reveal it to the guys. You know, it's like, I don't sing. <laughs> hate singing me. I don't even like music it's for girls. Because uh, it was that era. And yeah, so yeah. I, it was kind of a... I mean, I guess some of my closer... Uh, guy mates would would have would have maybe known that I that I enjoyed it as much as I did, but I was I was more open with it uh, about it with girls. Yeah, for obvious yeah. reasons. Obviously, obviously. Well, let, let's stay in the uh, in, in the formative years. Uh, I'm going to ask you uh, for track four. Tell me the first song you remember buying from a record shop, please. Well, you know what? The, my first recollection of buying my own music with my own money. I was about nine years old. We were in Limerick for a summer camp that my dad was running. And I was we were driving back uh, to Bangor. Me, Timmy Spencer, and Nicola Lavery, and another girl who I can't remember, but I was in love with Nicola Lavery. And it was desperate. It was, it was just the end of the world that that week had finished. And I wasn't going to see her for a while. Yeah. Uh, and we went, stopped at a garage, like a you know, truck stop type vibe. Um, and I bought a cassette of Michael Jackson's love song. I was such a soppy wee shit, you know? Uh, There's some good songs on there, right? Oh, yeah. Of course, yeah. But farewell, my son. Uh, love. No farewell, one. Farewell, no, I won't forget you. No one references that one. That's one of my favourites. And I literally, yeah, back when yeah. anybody mentions, like, uh, Jackson... People never mention that song. It's an absolute belter, isn't it? Oh, it's a belter. And it was the one that I listened to over and over again. That's another thing that I was and still am pretty obsessive about shit. So, you know, as soon as I heard that song, I had my dad rewind the tape, play it again until he just got too annoyed to do it again. You know, he's like, no, we're listening to the rest of the tape. Because I just wanted to hear that again, again, yeah. again, again, again. <laughs> Um, you mentioned kind of singing to girls and stuff in your, in your younger years at school and things like that. And uh, I mean, I, I want to ask you what your relationship is with, with confidence and what it was then to what it is now. That's a question. You're not messing around. <laughs> uh, but you know what? I think much like much like everyone, you know, childhood's a, it's a fucking minefield, isn't it? You know, it's a, you know, I really, I have three kids now myself and um, I constantly remind myself to be lenient about shit because they're going, you know, everybody knows it sucks to grow up as Ben Folds once wrote. Oh you know, man, you know that song? Yeah. Fucking hell, man. I'm, I'm oh, high-fiving yeah. you, still fighting it by Ben <laughs> Folds, man. Fucking hell, that yeah. that's in my top five. Break your heart in two. Yeah. You're so much like me. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> fucking hell, man. Yeah, what right? a song. What, what a song. A indeed. Fucking hell. It's so filled with the uh, with jewels. Yeah. And wisdom. It's it's a killer tune. And yeah. it's a just a beautiful song. But I love that when you get a song. It's like it's like going to see a comedian where you, you not only do you laugh, but you leave thinking about shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, yeah. That's he's one of those sort of songwriters you can laugh and cry to his songs, and after they're done, you think, oh, "Fucking hell, what a yeah, what a what a rock on tour," you know? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, my my confidence was as shaky as everyone else's, man. You know, um, I think I had that 
air of invincibility that all we boys do for a while until they sort of start to like girls mm. and then realize uh, their confidence isn't quite what they thought it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and that, you know, you know, you, you go online and you can see, you know, videos of you playing some in ridiculous places, you know, um, What's the moments like for you before you walk out on stage? Are you still the sort of person that that'll have a beer, like fourteen nervous pisses, and then like go out, or like what? What's the kind of uh, what's the deal? No, no, I don't get those nerves at all. And you know why? It is? I don't think it's well. I guess it is a form of confidence. It's a confidence that I've kind of cultivated, but it, it's it's not that I'm so confident that I'm going to do great. It's that well. There's another, there's another song I'm going to quote, another song, Prince. It would be ludicrous to think that we are new to this. We do this. This is what we do. Do you know what I mean? That's what I, that's what I do. Mm. You know, I sing every day. I play my guitar every day. I play piano every day. Or I, I'm in the studio every day. Uh, even if I'm not in the studio, there's no day goes by without me singing. So it's just what I do, and I enjoy it. And I feel like if I go up there and I fuck up, it's not like I cut an artery and, you know, suddenly we need to rush the theater. I just look like a bit of a tit for a minute. Yeah, you know, yeah, and then and then the moment passes, and the, you know, and even the worst case scenario, if you really bombed or whatever, I mean, like, so what? So what? It's a fleeting moment, isn't it? It is. It's just like you know what I mean. Just go, go where you're wanted, go where you're invited, and anywhere that says we don't want you here, then it's all right. Bye. See ya. <laughs> Enjoy George Ezra. <laughs> I was a cheeky one. I think you got George, you're a diamond, you're a sweetheart. Um, for track five, uh, I, I asked guests to sort of soundtrack their years clubbing. You've told me that you didn't go clubbing in advance. No. So what this question, because it's um, it's incredible uh, uh, the amount of people I've asked that question to that have gone, no, I never went clubbing. And, and I think I need to kind of reframe the question because I think it sort of leads people to thinking of, you know, uh, chrome laden night spots with you know house music being bled it, it can be a dive bar it can be your local indie night it can be you know a bar that you would hang out with you know hang out with your pals in those kind of 18 to, to 21 years of age and like any songs that you know are symbolic of that time so I'm, I know I've put you on the spot here uh, no, but yeah uh, these are good questions <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, I mean, well, I'm I'm gonna go somewhere else. As soon as you started talking like clubbing, I was going, well, when I was 14, I used to go to the Matinee Club, but it was like an underage disco where you know you'd go and get four beers, sink them in 10 minutes, and then go in and dance. And you know, that was sort of during the acid days. So like humanoid was the song that came to mind. Oh, stack of humanoid. <laughs> you remember that one? Fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was wild. Uh, that's a mental record, that is. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Only um, choice. But, but you know what? When you say clubbing, like something that I did regularly, something that I, throughout the years, I would go back to that That sort of, that would be my jam, would be going to see singers or bands. But one guy in particular, a guy called Ken Haddock, uh, who's a dear friend of mine uh, since way back when, since going to see him, basically, he would play every Sunday in a bar called Woolsey's and every thursday in a bar called jenny watts where he still plays this day actually <laughs> um but going there and just hearing what new songs he was going to play that week or or even just hearing the kind of obscure songs that he would pick and play every week that no one else is really playing these kind of tunes you had to go and see ken to get it um you know like nick drake john martin you know, all that kind of like english folk and american folk and uh Aye, he wasn't just doing Brown Eyed Girl and Superstition. You know what I mean? He, yeah. In fact, he didn't, he didn't do either of them. It yeah. was always Bruce Coburn, you know, Bruce Springsteen, loads of other Bruce's. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he said he said he never Bruce's. <laughs> yeah. Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> Bruce Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Lee. <laughs> um, all right, well, I'm going to take you home. Um, I'll tell you what, before I take you home, we've, we've spoke confidence. I'm not um, that easy, I'll have you know. Really? 
We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Me home. Well, we'll see. We got. I got one more question, and I'm going to see if I can take you home. Right. So, right. What, <laughs> what I want to know is, uh, for after asking you about confidence, and and you've you've chose um, to to to, to uh, have a, a a career in in an industry that's famously difficult uh, and 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 can be ruthless, uh, and so aside from confidence. Tell me about drive. Drive's a, a key one. That's a that's a key one right there, man. Um, there's a great quote by Mike Tyson. Where he says, "It doesn't matter how good you are at whatever in life, you are nothing without discipline." Hmm. You're nothing without discipline. And I do see that in a lot of, I've seen it over the years in hundreds of, maybe even thousands of, of, of people, uh, artists coming up that sort of think they want to get into, you know, you know, the bands that, you know, one week they're in ripped jeans and leather jackets. And then the next week they look like Mumford and Sons because that's cool. And, they, you know, they, they don't really know what they want. They just want to be in a band and yeah. be cool and, and do cool shit. And they, they don't really want the, do you know what I mean? I, I've got two, I've got two broken marriages now. I, I I I spent a large portion of my life on the road, uh, mm. away from my family, away from my friends, away from the people that knew me and loved me, playing in shitholes around in Europe and England and America and wherever else. You know, like literally starting at the at the bottom. Yeah. You know, playing playing to three people in Mobile, Alabama. Yeah. Or whatever, and then you know whatever. <clears throat> And that that takes a drive because yeah. it, unless unless you can see the long game, unless you can see the long game and what you're doing it for, uh, you're not going to make it. Yeah, absolutely. You're not make it, you know, um, because you, unless unless you get real lucky, which happens once in a while for those few people where it just clicks but mostly if you want something in life you're going to have to work to get it and your work ethic i, I agree with that i i think uh you can be just semi-talented but if your work ethic is twice that of the hardest worker around you'll do you'll do well yeah absolutely definitely, definitely. work hard work hard and you'll and, and you'll do well well you've got very little say on this but i'm taking you home now um fire and i'm gonna ask you uh for your favorite song from an artist from your home county please this has got a, this is a really hard one to pick um, who who was in the running then for it what what, what you got <laughs> well do you know what the god's honest truth is the only person that was in the running is a guy called peter j mccauley i mean okay. there are other artists that i love like honorable mentions would be gareth and lop this new song called animal that he's just released is fucking ridiculous um, you know, there's there's some there's some real cool shit going on. But what, what, if you if you look at my Spotify to see what I listened to and my top artists in the last year, it's all Peter J. McCauley. It's okay. all him. I, I just listened to that record Amnesty over and over and over and over and over. I just I didn't listen to anything else. I was either writing music, and if I was in my car or I wanted to listen to something. I just listened to Peter J. McCauley because he, he really, I don't know what it is. He's one of those artists just really speaks to me with a, I don't even know what he's fucking saying, but it's doing good shit and I can't get enough of it. And there's a song called Until the Lights Dim on that record on Amnesty. So I want to say it was hard to pick. It was hard to pick which one off that record. Right. Because, <laughs> you know, Anywhere My Love Will Go was a, oh my God, it's like it was written in the 20s or something. And then Pony on the Fur is, I don't know, a trip of some sort. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, Until the Lights Dim by Peter J. McCauley. Okay, okay, right. We spoke about trends and uh, and and how you know youngsters are listening to music on TikTok and stuff like that. Well, I'm I'm gonna take you there now. You're gonna be uh, what uh, what the kids call an influencer now, mate. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I want you to tell me for the last song, mate. Um, a song that you think many people may not know that you would like them to hear. Perfect. Gareth and Lop. <laughs> Animal. And what can people expect from that? Uh, 
to fall in love with Gareth and Lop. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, it's, there's a there's a live video on YouTube. Google it, uh, or just go on YouTube, put in Gareth and Lop, animal, uh, and and it'll be there. It's him sitting in a wee sort of dimly lit room, and uh, I, listen, I watched it for the first time before when he just shot it. He said, "What do you think of this? Me? Is it all right?" And by the end of it, I was thinking, "Oh my." God, I'm not even gay, but I would. I mean, you're <laughs> what the fuck? That was so sensual. Oh, incredible. Well, I mean, that's that's a good way to sell it, man. So what we do is we put together a, a little Spotify playlist so people can go and check out all of the tracks uh that you've chosen today for it. Um we're, we're we're steaming well into 2022 now, mate, and uh and we're looking at a, a summer that's hopefully going to be as as, as covid friendly as, as as you know hopefully a lot more than it has been the, the previous two you know we're seeing festivals back on we're seeing tours we're seeing you know art in all many sort of wonderful places re-emerge uh, and so i'm going to ask you um as we start to wrap what you're looking forward to from this year personally and what you're going to be doing professionally uh <clears throat> well, professionally, we'll start with the latter. Um, I'm about to go out and tour in the States, starting in uh, New, New York. We're in Levon Helm's place for a couple of nights. Uh, and then we're Webster Hall in Brooklyn. I think we, I can't remember how. We're in New York for a bit, and then we're, yeah, down the East Coast, uh, Nashville. I can't remember all the dates off the top of my head, but that's I'm away from the month of May doing that. And then, uh, and then later in the year, I've got uh, a similar month away for the UK and Europe. So uh, that's that's the that's the tour schedule for the year, and I think that might be the tour schedule for the next while. I don't want, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's a lot being away. It's a lot yeah. being away. The two, my my two youngest are uh, four and just about to turn two. So, I yeah, I, you know, I don't want to take a month away every every year I can't do that so anyway so outside of outside of that just continuing to write continuing to uh write with a, a couple of other people that I'm sort of working on their record with them um and just doing what I want to do really I guess <laughs> that sounds right. well just be you know I like doing what I what what interests me yeah um that's that's what the professionally speaking that's what I'm focused on this year and personally just uh yeah I just got a, a new gaff there that i've got a that i've got a sword out so in the summer i'll be lots more dump runs down to <laughs> and get either history lessons or dirty jokes is what i usually tell me <laughs> um well if people want to find out um about tour dates uh and, and everything else that you're up to where's the best place for people to keep up with speed with you mate foyvance.com simple um i haven't said that in what feels like maybe a decade and a half by the way really Boyvance.com, no. <laughs> well, no, it is. it's like MySpace. Check it out. MySpace.com <laughs> forward slash boy. Oh, is MySpace still there? Is it just I this don't. weird graveyard that you just kind of like wander around and. Surely not. Surely not. Um, I wonder is. I'm going to Google it. I'm going to check for it as soon as I get off here. Before you know it, you'll be updating your profile. Um, I might just. <laughs> Boy, it's been proper nice, mate, having a chat with you about records. Um, I really Not appreciate pleasure. your time today, mate. Not at all. It's been a pleasure. Slancha. Absolutely, mate. Enjoy that Guinness. And, uh, and yeah, and hopefully I'll catch you soon. Take it easy, brother. Yes. See you, my man. I'm just going to press stop on here.